Hey everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make this full chair assembly. In this particular chair, I can put different, I could put legs, I could put long legs or short legs, I could put a rocker combination on there. This is a very versatile chair for me. Uh, this chair has armrests that come out, and but the the point of this video is how to build the chair section, which is a little bit involved, but it, it's a good product for me. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching. So here's the next step. There's the seat, the deck chair seat, and the deck chair back, each made out of 2x4s, each on a 15 degree miter, and they have a, a handsome uh, bandsaw cut that needs to be made. So I start off, cut these to length, and cut these to length. And we go from there. That's a nice fit. I just lay this out and I will rig up a stop block to make these consistent 45 cuts but you may be able to see this curve uh, we just go to town we've got uh, since there's 12 chairs there's two of these per chair uh, there's going to be two of these with one by two slats going across so 24 of these, 24 of these to make my 12 chairs that I need to make. This also, same thing, uh, I don't even have to do, get it flush there on the outside corner, which is flush up here. Everything looks good. our marks so we can go to town and here's all of the components and I also have them I cut them knowing that there's a good side and a bad side that's always an important issue for me uh, some is some of these good sides and bad sides are, are not as obvious as others. Sometimes there's an obvious bad side. Here's a, here's a beautiful obvious bad side. So when I put this into motion, um, I'm going to make sure that this is the side that's facing out and this is the side that's facing in to the other side and it's, uh, it is the back so it will be visible. I, I put the uglier parts down lower and I'll sand some of this uh, but it won't be as visible on the outside. It'll be on the inside of the chair. You will see it on the seat portions. Uh, if there's a bad side, nobody's going to see that. Like, here's one. This side was decent. This side isn't as great. It's even got a little bit of a void through here. So this will be underneath, underneath the seat. No one's ever going to see this ever. Um, whether this is up and it is up in this position and it's going to have a curve cut here this will be behind underneath the slats nobody will ever see this so if you look over here so when I cut these I have half of them go with the, the miter going to the left and the other half with the miter going to the right because as I cut them, I paid attention to the, the A side and the B side. Same with the, the seat portions. And that, that just, you don't want to end up with a bunch of bad sides that you have to use on the outside. Or, and you don't want to throw that wood away either.
So I've got a few of these cut, six or so. You can see straight off the bandsaw, these don't need to be sanded. It's, uh, it's a smooth transition right here. And that's a nice gentle curve. That curve is just about the max tight curve I could get with my half inch blade. But it works. And these are going to be covered with 1x2 seat slats. So this doesn't have to be a perfect finish. So I, I just need to buzz through 48 of these. 24 of these and of the seat sections and 24 of the back sections. And I'm ready for the next phase after that. I don't believe I've mentioned yet the seat and the back will connect in a half lap. Cut half of this out, cut the other half of this out, and they will sit together and be as one board. So we're going through the half lap process now. I've got a dado stack. I don't have a plate for this, but I think I'm doing okay without it. Now see when I do that, you see the ridges? It's not even. So I'm going to make it some lateral passes across the blade. Now when you look at it, it's cleaned up very well, very nicely. It's glue ready at this point. And there's all the rest of them. Okay, here we are with the glue up process. I glue the main face of each side with something like that. Something like that. And then I glue these uh, sides where they're going to connect, come into contact with the other. And the half lap joint fits together just like that. I like my spring clamps but I used them all. But these, these hold much better. But the spring clamps just grabbed immediately. There, that's it. really comes together well. After a few hours these will be solid as a rock. And for now there's a, an ugly stack of everything. But uh, we're getting through it. Here's a pro tip of the day, blaster dry lube. I've tried a number of different dry lubes. This one has amazing lubrication, but it leaves a film. 
and with that film, I don't care if it's on this table or on this saw, uh, it, that doesn't bother me. That's all it requires. A little bit of that, a little bit of spray on the table. Let that dry just for a second. It dries rather quickly. Then, when you put your material up, it slides effortlessly. So here's the next thing, drilling holes in the edge of the seat slats. Uh, the holes are going to be three quarters of an inch away from the edge because they're going into a 2x4, which is this thickness. Uh, so they'll go right in the center if this is inch and a half, so the hole will be at three quarters of an inch. And here's how I do it. I have a little gauge. I, I made a few of these. This one has a half inch reveal and then an inch and a quarter on this side. This one has three quarter reveal and one inch on this side. Uh, they have their moments of, you know, marking or drilling. That This has been the fastest way that I've found to drill holes in the edge. I, I, here's, let me start a little bit more. I take all my boards, they could be rough placed wherever. I have my two foot clamp. I've got 15 of these in here and along the edge of the clamp 
I line everything up kind of like that and then I just put a little pressure hold them together pull it over the edge so I don't drill into my table I put this clamp on just to keep anything from moving around I grab my three quarter inch gauge I just put it on the edge and go down like that I line it up and drill I've removed the block before I start drilling pine is very soft so I, I don't want to dig too deep into it and as the bit breaks through the backside it, it wants to fall but at the same time these two went a little too deep but it's okay there's no harm Okay, so now I have 30 of this seat slats cut to length, routed the edges, holes drilled and countersunk. So as you can see, I'm starting to fill these, load them, starting to load the slats with screws, two inch screws. Sometimes I use stainless. These are called a premium exterior because where I'm at even the stainless will rust or tarnish uh, and I, I always recommend these seats get coated with something a stain or a paint uh, so in my opinion it doesn't matter what the screw is at that point if you got it covered and protected and sealed it, it'll be fine even if it was a drywall screw. It should be. So, the screws all placed. Let me get these kind of out of the way. These are my spacers. I have three different sizes of spacers. These are similar to these, but they're a little bit different, so I identified them as such. These are the standard ones. First thing I do, after some trial and error, I pull from this edge and I mark 13 and 5 eighths based on my standard spacing which is about 5 sixteenths or is that 3 eighths? That's about 3 eighths if you could see that with my rusty tape. Uh, I got a lot of these cutoffs and they're very convenient but I mark 13 and 5 eighths. 13 and 5 eighths is my number that works with my spacing it, it, you know, there could be some feeling around to see if that should be a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. But that's my number. And I put that to the back side of that screw. Where's my screw gun? It's right here. So I'm going to start with this one. On the mark, flush on the edge, on the outside edge. Moved a little, but that's okay. That does happen. Keep it flush. There you go. Just a little below the surface. Not, it's not buried into the surface. Uh, I put one at that mark. I put this one, the top edge of the seat slat right on the short point or the the bevel point I lost a screw might have to get another screw because those are practically camouflage on my floor I, I put the edge of the seat slat right on this edge keeping the rest of it flush I like starting on this side because my left hand holds the material and I can kind of grab everything at once. And then it holds itself up. 
I do a little line up. I do a little bit of, uh, I'm going to have to screw this in with my left. I don't like, I'm not comfortable here. Good. Very good. Then, I can flip that over. And before I laid the seat support components out, I, I did that mark again. You can see my mark is at 13 and 5 eighths. I'm thinking about making a little jig. You just slap a jig on there and mark it. I, I think I'll get around to that at some point. 13 and 5 eighths, already marked here on the top. So once again, just grab the next seat slide in line. This one's got a messed up edge, but A side and B side, that B side is down. No one's going to see that. I'll get it started on this side. to this side. Do the one in the front. This one, I'm going to have to get my two foot and this happens. Sometimes the wood has a little twist, it has a little curl, what have you. Uh, I'll go a little larger and draw it back in to where it needs to be. Sometimes I need to flip these arms around and turn it into a spreader and spread these out uh, to get it where it needs to be. And I clamp it until this is flush out here on the end. I line this up and take her home. Perfect. So, this seat slat in this location does a few things. It, it dictates that the seat slats that are placed in this area will have a consistent gap both from the front of the seat and from the top of the seat going down. And then if there's any imperfections of the gap, I, I can float those out within this area. It also helps hold the entire structure nice and straight, um, which, which is good, or relatively straight. I don't have to keep measuring. I could start getting one side flush and then come back and the other side is already close enough if it's not perfect. So get some of those, some of those, start just gapping all of these. I could even start from that end. It's kind of good to start downhill and they don't fall away. They, they lean into the last piece, the spacers that is. Put a shorter one in there. See, this ends up being... So I start on one side, keep it flush, and I work my way down. This time, I mean, I don't have to feel. I know that they're they're where they are is where they are. Now this one, the last one's got a little bit of play. There's not enough to even worry about. It. So these are done. I could take all my spacers out. 
which are not wedged in. There's one here that's a little snug. Out of all of those, there's one that's a little snug. Sometimes I get pliers to pull it out, but no big deal. Flip this over. I've already got this, so we could start. I, I need to load some more with screws, but we're just going to start putting these in. Spacing everything. Just because we're here, this one has a sharpie writing. If it was down here, no one's going to see it. I don't want it, it's going to be at the very top of the seat, so I don't want I don't want it to accidentally show. So I'm going to save this for somewhere down here, and just grab the next one. Load that last one up. And these are good to go. I could start at the very end, putting pressure all the way through each spacer in each seat slat. Sometimes get kind of tight because I put pressure sometimes when you drive the screw it pushes it forward a little bit uh, if they get tight I could tap them with a rubber mallet uh, I, I have a rubber mallet here somewhere but I can't say I need it yet these still move around with some ease Same thing, put pressure on the very end, going, and that pressure will transmit, transfer all the way back. And now from here I can just send them home. So that's those again. One, two, three, four, five, eight, eight slats. And those eight make 16. We're a little more than halfway there. Some of these are snug. Two of them I might need a little help with. Maybe one. Need a little help with where was that tool? Can I get this in there? There we go. So then let me load these with screws.
might be it. That is it. Okay, so I've got, if I, if I maintain this gap, I've got a little bit larger gap than what I can get away with. You can't leave that large gap there. So, those were 3 8 These are my larger gap ones. These are right at a half, so they're an eighth inch thicker. These, these four, I think these are 7 16 Yeah, they're also, they're like a heavy 3 8 but a little bit heavier than those. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a few of those at the top and then place some of these and, and walk these down until we get to where we meet up with the others. And it should just be this one more. See, that's relatively good fit. This fit is a little snug. Let's squeeze that in. That's a loose fit also. That's basically it. Um, so these with the 3 8 gap, these with the 3 8 gap, it goes a little bit larger. It's inside the curve of the seat. So now that I flipped it over, I got two more pieces on the at the seat and two more pieces like this at the top. I just slap these on the surface and butt it up against this one. Slap it on there and just up against that one. Just that simple. Let me get a flush on this end, which is decent with that end. Here's one. It had a a knot in there, which I didn't want to put in the middle of everything, but the seat will go like this. This is the finished seat position. So that knot will be rolled all the way around. No one's ever going to see that. Mostly what you see on this one, you can feel it with your legs, uh, this piece here, but you see it on the end, and, and that's about it. So no one's going to see that knot. Sometimes if you have a a piece that's not the best looking, this is a good location for it. And just like the last one, I slap it onto the, the bevel, slide it up against the last piece, and secure it. Just like that. Now I have two more at the very top. And you want these to be good looking because they are visible. They're clearly visible. But the same procedure. Put it on the cut 2 by slide it up against the last seat slat. And fasten it. So, this seat section, aside from some sanding, is complete. And I will take the sander. I never sanded this edge of the 2 by the support section. Uh, but now that all of these seat slats are on there, that's when I like to sand it all. And it, it brings, instead of just cleaning up that 2 by it, it cleans everything up together. It really, and I can remove the, 
the stamps from the factory or the the uh, milling yard. Um, I can clean all that up, and this same on this side. It, my half lap joinery. Sometimes there's a little imperfection, but I can flush it out. And while I'm at it, I can flush this up, although that's lovely in flush. This one has just a fraction of an offset. But I'll, I'll clean that up, and I'll clean this up. And some of these bark locations, I'll, I'll clean some of that bark off of there. But here's a good example. There's an A side and a B side. We put the B side in where no one's going to see it. And this one has some imperfection here. It had a knot here, but it did not have a knot on the outside. It had this, but I could sand that off. Um, but a good example of A sides are, are visible, B sides are not nearly as visible. And, and for the underneath, for the seat support, no one is going to ever see the inside of these. So if you had something that had some ugliness or imperfection or road rash or what have you, that's a great place to put it because no one's going to see it. So with this seat component, that's a seat. You can apply legs to make it a, a tall deck chair. You can apply shorter legs to make it a lower chair. Uh, I've got another back section. I have a porch swing that I make in the exact same style with the exact same armrests, but the back is much shorter because porch swings don't typically have that tall back on it. But here's the porch swing back, and it, it flows exactly the same at the bottom, but then the back is a little bit different, and it, but it's still a very comfortable porch swing. Most comfortable porch swing I ever sat on. This is just my template for it. Um, but the process is the same on the porch swing. It's the half lap joint. It's uh, longer seat slats, but it's the same process. Uh, it has one on each end and, and one in the center. For a five foot porch swing, you could do a four foot. You could even do a six foot. You could do whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm going to bring you one other thing and show you. Now that the seat is built, on top of adding legs for certain chairs, oh, come here. Here's my rocker assembly. And we're going to have another video on this with the, the rocker on a 48 inch radius. And uh, I have a half inch dowel supporting the, the legs into the rocker. Uh, and a whole lot of glue and I have some jigs set up where this will go somewhere in this position and get clamped and fastened with a, uh, a carriage bolt going through here and through there uh, but it's a it's a lovely port, uh, rocking chair it's a lovely porch swing it's a lovely deck chair here's one of the armrests that will be on here. Uh, this is shaped and sanded, but the surface isn't yet sanded. But this is it. This is the whole package. Uh, make seat components. First you make the individual components and you assemble and glue the, the back to the seat. Uh, make a full seat. Now I'm going to put I'm making 12 of these right now. You can see all the seat slats I have. There's 450 or so. Um, hopefully there's a few extra. But I'm going to be going to town as it were. And so I can make as I make these, I put them aside and make another and put them aside. And then I'll come back and, and do my leg components and, and apply the legs to the seats, apply the arms to the legs. In this case, the arm will go somewhere in here and it fits right on top with uh, uh, pocket hole screws supporting it. And then the, 
eventually there will be a smaller little support piece covering these two screws with its own pocket hole screw but it just gives additional support for the armrest itself everything glued and screwed it, it's going to be uh, even though it's it's not uh, indoor quality it, it's an outdoor structure it's going to be like an heirloom material it, it's going to hold forever especially if it's coated it, it's going to last for generations I promise and another thing I promise it's the most comfortable chair for outdoor furniture you've ever sat on uh, without a cushion that is so I gotta go to work thanks for watching Here's one more thing. Remember when I showed you we're cutting the boards one by sixes, ripping them down to one by twos, then we stack them to, to stagger them to make them uh, without a pattern um, just unpredictable on the layout. Now, and then when I go through the routing process, I stagger them some more. So there's no this section belonging to this section. The last thing you want to do here, and I could take them off 15 at a time. Two sets of 15 does one chair unit. So when I bring them over here, as they are random, you want a random pattern. And I'm not doing anything in particular, but it's all relatively random. The last thing you want to do is stack them all up so that this whole stack is from one board and this whole stack is from one board. And then when you get on the chair, it looks like a section is from a board, then another section is from a board. That doesn't look good. So here we've got completely random. It is what it is. And the, the first section I laid out over here, no particular order. Some bright greens next to some yellows, next to some darker greens and a gray and a brown, but it's just totally random. If, if something is next to each other, like some of these are similar, but they're not the same. Um, some of these are similar and near each other, but it's completely random. That's what you want. Uh, a, a full random pattern. You don't want green and yellow and brown. So anyway, that's why we start, when we start breaking them down, we randomize everything and we continue to randomize everything. and. Then when the final product, you don't have to try to pick and choose, oh, this doesn't belong there because everything's automatically random.